Michal Klima. I'm a senior project manager at the Innovation and Networks Executive Agency, which is the agency uh, that is responsible for the implementation of the transport uh, program. Uh, and uh, today I would like to open uh, this session on the presentation of three projects uh, concerning research on uh, electric um, uh, drives. So next slide, please. Um, so the first I would like to uh, give some uh, policy context why we do have research actually in this area, why we need it, uh, and what are the expected um, outcomes. So we have three projects that will be featured. Uh, so uh, this is um, uh, uh, the project's uh, modulate, refree drive, and uh, drive mode. Uh, they are all part of the Green Vehicle Initiative uh, contractual uh, public-private uh, partnership which was created in year 2013 and actually last uh, for the whole horizon uh, Europe, so until uh, 2020. The main aim of, of this um, uh, initiative uh, was uh, uh, to focus on, on the energy efficiency of vehicles. But uh, if you take what was before, so the green uh, car initiative, uh, with a specific emphasis um, on, um, on, um, on the alternative power trains. And the alternative power trains here means uh, either uh, electrification, hybridization, or uh, using uh, alternative fuels uh, for combustion engines, for example, uh, natural gas uh, or uh, biofuels. The reason why we have um, uh, uh, this research is because uh, the European Union has a very ambitious target um, in uh, for transport energy and especially for climate protection. Uh, so we know that in 2011, there was a, a transport uh, white, uh, white paper setting up a very ambitious uh, target for the reduction of greenhouse gases, especially for uh, CO2. And the only way how to address um, uh, these targets uh, is to continue in research activities uh, and uh, to completely change uh, uh, the uh, portfolio of vehicles that we have on road now uh, uh, and to turn it into future. So uh, just to speak about uh, the uh, European Green Vehicle uh, Initiative. So that was the initiative that was uh, and is still running uh, for seven years uh, with the total uh, EU funding of about 750 million euros uh, out of uh, about 660 million are managed by INEA. In practical terms, uh, the implementation of the initiative uh, was uh, uh, through uh, work programs. So since 2014, there were the three work programs. The first work program uh, for 2014-2015 with the Green Vehicle Call. The second, 2016-2017. And the last one in Horizon 2020 uh, from 2018 uh, to 2020. So now you know that we are in, in year uh, 2020. So in principle, this is the end of uh, the Green Vehicle Initiative uh, as such. Uh, but in the same way as there was a transition between the uh, green car and the green vehicle initiative, uh, you probably know that uh, what is under preparation is uh, another partnership, which uh, is for the time being called um, 20, and it will be a logical continuation of uh, the green vehicle initiative. As for if in, in terms of scope, uh, it will probably continue to focus on electrification, but there might be another areas, for example, uh, the use of hydrogen for heavy duty vehicles uh, and, and so on. But um, uh, you know that the European Commission uh, has approved uh, the multi-annual uh, financial framework uh, in the summer uh, this year. So what is happening now are the big negotiation about uh, the overall budget for uh, research, what will be the part of, uh, of uh, uh, budget uh, allocated uh, to transport, and of course at the end uh, what will be uh, the uh, budget allocated uh, to this 2.0 initiative. This is probably going to be uh, known uh, in upcoming months and certainly uh, the aim is to start the activities um, in 2021. Okay, next slide please. So uh, now we get uh, a little bit into more detail uh, to projects that are going to be presented. So all these three uh, projects addressed uh, the topic in the call uh, uh, from year 2017 and specifically, specifically the topic uh, next generation electric drivetrains for fully electric vehicles focusing on high efficiency and, and low cost. Uh, so I think the name of the topic itself is already quite uh, uh, self-explanatory, but uh, let's say the focus was uh, on optimization of the drive uh, train uh, components uh, for fully electric vehicles uh, uh, and uh, with uh, emphasis on, on efficient use, uh, recovery of energy, but there are as well other aspects, uh, for example, cost, uh, 
and uh, related uh, to cost uh, to take into account uh, design issues, uh, manufacturing issues, uh, uh, reduction of weight, uh, and as well uh, the reduction of uh, material cost. So uh, we will see uh, later on in particular uh, how with this uh, challenge uh, the, uh, the free projects uh, are dealing. But uh, the next slide, uh, please. Uh, the next uh, slide shows what we are expecting as the tangible outcome of these uh, three projects. Uh, so I have already mentioned that uh, one principal issue with uh, the increase uh, of uh, uh, use of electric uh, vehicles is uh, uh, cost. So what we are looking for is here is uh, the reduction of total motor and power electronic system cost uh, through, for example, optimized design uh, for manufacture. Uh, this is uh, one of the expected impacts that is not completely quantified. So uh, there was uh, some free space for the projects to address uh, the, this expected impact. But then there are two uh, expectations that are uh, related uh, to the electric motor and that are related uh, uh, to the uh, motor power electronics. And you can see that uh, the specification and the expected results are very, very uh, detailed, very specific. So uh, even numbered, uh, so for example, like uh, the increase in specific torque, the specific power of electric motor, uh, uh, from electric motors, uh, increase in maximum operating speed. And we have to say that for each uh, project, we have expected uh, to provide a baseline and uh, to see when they develop uh, uh, the new technologies uh, to see how they will perform in terms of the comparison of existing technologies. Uh, the same applies as well for uh, motor power electronics, uh, where we expected a 50% increase in the power density. Uh, we as well expected a significant reduction in electric losses. Uh, and uh, in, in case uh, the potential application is a hybrid configuration, uh, the possibility to have the same cooling liquids uh, and temperatures uh, as, as used for the combustion engine. So uh, this will be very interesting, actually, because now what will be followed up uh, is uh, the presentation of these three projects to see how they are addressing the specific requirements and how they are meeting uh, them. I think each project will present in detail, uh, in detail uh, the actual progress and when they are. But uh, in a summary, at least, uh, at least I will introduce uh, uh, where all the projects are and when they should uh, have been. So all of them started uh, in autumn 2017, uh, so either in October or November 2017. And in principle, all of them were running or were expected to run for three years. Um, so uh, by the time now, uh, the project should have been finished. Um, uh, I think uh, up to, let's say, the first 18 months, uh, the progress was uh, satisfactory for most of them. And unfortunately, uh, the situation that nobody could have predicted uh, happened uh, in the course of the uh, year 2020 with uh, the co uh, COVID um, uh, pandemic. So uh, all of three projects, and I think uh, not only this pro project from this particular uh, call, but I think uh, uh, in general in, in research and uh, certainly in, in transport and, uh, research, uh, uh, we're not able actually to finish um, all research activities uh, within the duration that was initially foreseen due to uh, COVID uh, pandemia, closure of the factories, uh, and so on. So uh, we are now in a situation where uh, the projects were extended, uh, in most cases uh, by uh, six months, uh, and we expect them to, to be finished uh, in, in spring uh, 2021. So what is my expectation as well from the presentation today is that uh, hopefully, uh, even though we know that uh, the global pandemic, COVID pandemic is not over, uh, that uh, uh, this uh, six months prolongation will be sufficient, that all the projects are on good path uh, to deliver results, uh, that they will be able to demonstrate these results because this was one of the requirements as well, that uh, the results should be demonstrated um, on a full size working prototype uh, and uh, that this will happen uh, by the spring of the next year. Of course, I can imagine that everyone would enjoy to have uh, a very nice, uh, the final dissemination um, uh, activity that uh, could be uh, done differently, that we are forced to do it now. So not only remote participation, but the demonstration of the vehicles uh, on site, uh, seeing the uh, physical demonstrators. Uh, I think now uh, with um, uh, the situation around COVID in the whole Europe, I'm a little bit skeptical that it will be possible. Of course, we will be discussing uh, with the coordinators uh, uh, what are the potentials, uh, but uh, 
uh, given the situation now, uh, I don't see it uh, as, as an option. So from this point of view, uh, uh, I'm just, uh, as I said, I'm looking forward uh, to see the uh, particular results uh, up to now. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. And uh, I'm just uh, going to listen carefully. Uh, and I hope that everyone will enjoy uh, particular presentations from the project. Thank you very much uh, and have a nice day. Bye. Great, thank you very much, Michal, for your introduction. Then we can go to the next project. So, um, Bernas, you can, you can take the floor. Thank you. Hello, yes. I just share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes, it works. Thank you. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, hello, everyone. I would like to uh, thank you, the project officer, for the very nice introduction. And also, I would like to welcome you all to this webinar on behalf of uh, Drive Mode project. My name is Mernas Farzanfar. I'm from VTT Finland, the coordinator of the Drive Mode project. So first, I will, I'm going to give a general overview of our project, and then I will give the floor to my colleagues from Danfoss and Neves, who will present our testing activities on the output of our project. So here you can see uh, the overview of our consortium. The project has started in 2017 and then will end on March 2021. As you can see on this map, our consortium consists of 12 partners from six different uh, European countries. And uh, drive mode has aimed at developing efficient and cost-effective drivetrain modules for distributed drive concept. In this figure here, you can basically see the main concept of drive mode. Uh, the drivetrain that we have developed consists of high-speed gearbox, high-speed motor, and uh, silicon carb carbide uh, inverter. These components are all integrated as one compact drivetrain module, or what we call IDM in this project, with a high voltage battery, controls, and cooling units. Uh, this drivetrain concept enables the possibility to configure the vehicle with four power options and with two or four wheel drive. And then the design is suitable to all types of mass produced electric and hybrid uh, vehicles from light, uh, light and passenger vehicle to high performance and high duty vehicles. So as mentioned by the project officer here, you can see the target values of our project, which were increasing the speed of the machine and uh, torque and <coughs> power of the system, excuse me, <coughs> while having the fast charging and reducing the material losses. Each of these targets are achieved via various technologies. For example, uh, the highest the highest speed developed machine has a higher torque and power and a smaller size compared to typical machines for this usage by using thin lamination material, uh, low, lowered uh, winding current density, semi-magnetic uh, wedges, and also utilizing advanced uh, optimization technologies. We have also utilized a high voltage battery in our drive mode vehicle. This choice basically decreases the required copper weight, simplifies the operation of the motor at higher speed, improves the efficiency of the uh, silicon carbide drive, uh, reduces and also reduces the charging time in comparison with uh, typical 240 voltage DC system. The utilization of the silicon carbide chips itself reduces the uh, switching losses significantly that basically allows to uh, downsize the thermal management equipment in comparison with the same power and frequency silicon devices. And here you can see uh, the design approach which was used for designing the drive mode components. At the start of the project, the technical requirements and the specification for the <clears throat> prototype were defined precisely. Then after that, based on this specification, all the components were designed in a loop. 
And <clears throat> this was done basically because uh, they are interdependent parameters. And after the testing and evaluating these designs, the components were manufactured and tested first individually and then as uh, an integrated unit. And here you can see uh, the view of our uh, produce integrated drivetrain or the IDM consisting of a mm, two, uh, 20 kilohertz uh, inverter and uh, a high frequency, sorry, a high speed gearbox and also a high speed permanent magnet machine. So next, I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Tommy, who will explain the testing which was done on this idea. Thank you, Marnas. So my name is Tommy Kankaranta and I'm a, a representing work package four. And, uh, and as my employer, it's Danfoss. And uh, uh, in these slides, I will try to, oh, the content of this slide is, is more, more from the testing side, but obviously uh, the inverter itself is, is a close cooperation or developed in close, close co cooperation with, with Semicron, who basically uh, provided the, the mechanics, power hybrids and, and, and related electronics to, to control the power hybrids, whereas as Danfoss is providing the control algorithms and, and the software and, and the control uh, CPU card that, that's, that's kind of controlling all this or, or tying these all together together but uh, given given this this context uh, the project has prog progressed into a phase where we have been able to start testing testing the full IDM which uh, Mernas represented earlier the consisting of of the electrical motor uh, inverter and 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 the gearbox and uh, for the IDM testing, our objectives were, were, were to, to validate system performance requirements defined in, in deliverable 2.1. And, and from there, we identified following, following uh, high-level objectives. So acceleration in seconds from zero to 100 kilometers per hour, top speed on a flat road, then top speed on a, on a four and six percent gradient hill, then continuous power, uh, torque and power, and, and peak torque and power as well. Uh, then in addition, the goal was to validate, or the goal is to validate the efficiency over the whole operational range of the, of the IDM, the, the, in a sense, this four quadrant operation like motoring and generating. So we can collect that data, data for further analysis. Next sli slide, please. And in our, our context, the, the testing concept for the IDM is, is presented in this slide, where, where, which is quite, I would say, traditional looking, uh, where we have a load, load machine, then we have the traction, traction machine and, and the related or corresponding inverters to control these. And uh, the IDM in, in this, left-hand side picture is, is represented by the, the uh, gray or black boxes. So that uh, consists of the gearbox, electrical machine and, and the inverter, or the traction inverter. Then uh, this is coupled with, through, a, through a coupling or, or this uh, shaft, shaft with, with a coupling to a, to a load, load machine, uh, which is represented by the, the bluish bluish box boxes and, and and the circle above and basically this is a setup uh, this is this setup was was constructed to uh, to enable us to to measure and and acquire the data data from the full idm idm uh, which is collected into a data acquisition system provided by vtt in, in this picture, it's the IMC Kronos in the middle, middle, and where we have a, let's say, analog inputs and other other sensoring data collected. Then to control the actual testing, 
we we use this canalizer tool with with let's say this custom scripting functionality to basically input test test data or test vectors in into the system which enabled us to to basically automate automate many of the of the of the testing testing uh, scenarios represented in the in the previous slide and this enabled us to basically once this testing system was was set up quite rapidly run the tests in a repeated repeatable manner manner so we can basically even uh, when this this setup is is transported to to vtd for for further further testing we can redo basically all all the tests done here and then we basically are able to get consistent data data from the from the setup and on the right hand side you see see the actual setup which is uh, looks uh, kind of busy in a sense in terms of cabling and 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 censoring and all this but basically the reason is that it's it's very heavily in instrumented setup so so we have flow sensors pressure sensors uh, vibration all these kind of sensors uh, current voltage sensors attached to this setup and 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 basically all of this information is collected to the uh, data acquisition system for for further analysis next slide please uh, so I briefly touched this already in the previous slide slide that what kind of components we have so basically all of the all of the partners chipped in and uh, in, 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 in a close collaboration we we built this setup like VTD provided the, the data acquisition system and helped us to build it and set it set it up then uh, we we provided the test automation where we had these test test vectors or test input data could be fed into which uh, obviously we had a uh, Chalmers and, and VTT provided us great input input and, and data or this test data which we then could execute in a reasonably automated fashion then obviously we need the IDM components like the the, the gearbox uh, gearbox and, and electrical motor inverter and uh, cooling circuit and and these these other auxiliary functions that that are needed to to make make this testing and uh, basically you have a many uh, list of of all the all the virtually all the all the partners partners who who at, were were uh, were like contributing to this this activity uh, then load and the motor inverter they they were in uh, in terms of the work package uh, assignments it's it was uh, us Danfoss and Semicron in, in co close co collaboration that that set those up and and, and uh, basically the setup is is working such that the load load machine is 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 controlled by a speed control and 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 the traction side is in, in torque control mode and that's a, our way of simulating this uh, real world real world uh, application of, of, of the IDM which uh, we see which is covered maybe more in detail on the next next pre presentation by by NEFS okay next slide slide please then I took a picture of a of a, of a or screenshot of, of, of this test test data what, how, what what does it look like and and in the, this picture you can see one one test file and it's basically a time series of 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 either references or, or speed uh, talk references speed references and and talk limits and 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 uh, speed limits and the noteworthy thing here is that since we have the gearbox in between like with a ratio of 14.1 uh, we need to basically on the other side we have a low torque but high speeds and 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 which is the traction side but uh, on the 
load side we have high torques but the lower speeds and then this uh, kind of forming this data together with Chalmers and VTT was was very interesting interesting at its itself in a sense topic but basically this enabled us to to run different scenarios and in this case this n underscore t peak peak motor file is, is basically is a test which which is uh, scanning through the the speed range of, of the motor and and and, and the applying peak torque at specific points operating points okay next next sli slide please and uh, here is a screen capture on, on the left hand side of, of, a, of a test where we have uh, this where you can see that different peaks of torque or these pulses of torque and or speed have been applied and, and basically scanning through the whole whole uh, operating range of, of the of the electrical motor or the IDM 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 uh, package which was a uh, kind of one of the goals to to uh, collect the data and, and analyze it uh, over the, the operational range of the, of the full IDM and uh, then uh, on the on the right hand side there this is a uh, more like a picture indicating how we how we uh, prepare the data data and and, and seeing that the limits limits and, and, and torque references and speed limits are, are set up properly properly to, to run the run the tests. Uh, next slide slide please. And uh, here's a video of, of, of the actual setup running running uh, in an automated fashion. It's not not a long one but uh, basically we we could sit in the control room and, and just observe if anything out of the ordinary, ordinary would, would happen, then, then we could interrupt the test. But otherwise we, we were able to just monitor, monitor that everything is going as, as expected. And thank you. I think that that's, uh, was my last slide. And uh, I think I will hand, hand over to, to Deepak from, from NEVS. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Deepak Singh, and I work as an electrical machine engineer at NEVS. And within this drive mode, I'm responsible as a Work Packer 7 leader. And Work Packer 7 is the test, uh, assembly testing and demonstration of a, of a fully functional vehicle. So, next slide, please. Uh, regarding the assembly of the demonstration vehicle, I can categorize it uh, in these major points. Uh, so basically, a high voltage 800 volt battery pack was the prerequisite of the project and we have done that uh, at NEFS in-house development and we provided the battery pack, ready battery pack to the uh, demonstration vehicle. And uh, uh, during the development of the uh, power, uh, powertrain IDMs, uh, quite early on, uh, once the design phase was over, we did a uh, collaboration with all the respective work packages and partners to make sure that we have a proper interfaces, mechanical interfaces, so that we can mount it in the existing uh, or the baseline vehicle that we had. And similarly for the electrical integration as well, we had to work with respective partners to uh, make sure that uh, all the interfaces are as required and we don't get any late surprises. And in the electrical in integration, it was uh, both the high voltage architecture and the low voltage architecture were modified quite a lot because there were new components added, uh, components moved around, so we had to put in quite an effort to integrate it. And the uh, fourth item is the thermal integration. Since we have two items per wheel in the front of the vehicle and we had to fulfill the requirement for the pressure drops as well as flow rates for the coolant fluid. So the thermal integration was also quite an important 
uh, part of the work. And finally, the most important part was the software integration because we have al we already had the functional vehicle. So putting in the IDMs, we need to make it safe to operate as well as uh, communicate with the IDMs with regard to the torque request, uh, different drive mode, uh, drive modes. So it was also a big task. Uh, next slide, please. So within this, uh, while developing the 800 volt battery pack, these are the specifications of uh, of the battery module that we develop. And basically, if it, the things to be noted here is it's a 800 volt nominal 800 volt battery pack, 40 kilowatt hour of uh, energy and 300 kg of weight with the same uh, coolant liquid as we have in the power train cooling loop. So these were the specification of the battery. And you can see uh, on, on the left, the uh, 3D render of the packaging, which includes all the modules, the battery management system, and the battery disconnect unit, as well as the cooling channels. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here is the actual picture of the battery pack that went into the vehicle without the lid, obviously, and uh, it includes the uh, battery management system as well as the battery disconnect unit. So next slide. So the next important uh, aspect of the vehicle assembly was the mechanical integration of the drivetrain unit. We all uh, we had the existing vehicle which we had to modify somewhat to accommodate this uh, new configuration as well as two new IDMs. So for that we had uh, in the right picture you can see the mounting concept. Uh, this was uh, entirely new for us, so we had to modify the subframe, put in the uh, horizontal bars to accommodate six mounting points and the bushings. And on the left, you can see the front packaging bay where the old drive unit was removed and the new IDMs were put in. And while doing this, we also realized that it would be good to have for the sensoring purposes and measurement, it, can, it is good to have accessibility as well as for the drive model to be visible, we put all other power electronics uh, toward, toward the rear, rear end so that we'll have a good access, accessibility in the front. So next slide, please. This is what it looks like in, inside the trunk in the front. So the two IDM modules has already been put into the demonstration vehicle. Next slide, please. And in the rear, uh, while well, the main purpose of this uh, work pack is was to have a fully functional vehicle. And when developing the high voltage architecture, we realized that uh, we have a 800 volt battery and to get other components like a functioning compressor and a heater for the uh, climate control as well as for the cooling loops. It was, we tried to find supplies for the 800 volt component, but it, it was quite difficult. Uh, no, there were no ready uh, components available. So then we decided to have two high voltage buses, one 800 volt for the drive modules and other was the 400 volt for the carryover component that we have from the uh, baseline vehicle. So, uh, but for the better visibility of the powertrain component, we put all the, of the IDMs, we put all those power component to the rear. So in the rear, it includes 800 to 400 volt DC DC to maintain the 400 volt bus and rest other components like the 400 to 12 volt DC DC to charge the battery on board charger, as well as the charging ports have been placed in the rear. And since we moved the components to the rear, it needed its own uh, separate cooling loop. So we had 
pump and radiator with the vents uh, modified in the vehicle to accommodate those and a new frame to to mount all those components in the rear next slide please so this is what it looks like uh, the uh, final assembly in the rear trunk next slide please and as i mentioned earlier uh, it was a major change in the electrical architecture uh, regarding both the high voltage architecture as well as the lower voltage ar architecture uh, because we have new components and the, even the carryover components were um, moved around to, to toward the rear of the vehicle so uh, uh, this uh, picture presents a snapshot of what those components were placed where in within the vehicle. So there was a major change that we we needed some extra pumps for the cooling loop, uh, some breakout or let's say a PDU extra PDU box for two different IDM modules to be supplied, and again, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, separate DC DC converter for 800 up to maintain the 400 volt bus. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this uh, this uh, picture represents the overall uh, cooling system. Uh, top left corner is the front of the vehicle, and bottom right corner is the rear. As you can see, we have a separate cooling loop in the in the rear and in the front, uh, it has been modified to adjust two IDMs uh, with its with some modification or added pumps to fulfill the requirements for the pressure drop and flow rates. And as well as the battery cooling system there. Next slide, please. And the most important part was the uh, software integration because it's very important for the functionality of the vehicle as well as the safety of the vehicle. So at, in the software part, we had the in-house software development for the vehicle control, the VCU which coordinates overall vehicle states like drive, neutral, charging, or reverse. Uh, these are the main uh, vehicle functionality were implemented in the software, as well as this uh, torque command to the inverters. And for the fully functional vehicle, uh, we have categorized it as a vehicle functionality and it needed CAN communication to be proper so that we can execute all the states that is required for safe, fun safe function of the vehicle, as well as for the fault detection and trying to manage those faults. Uh, next slide, please. During this uh, vehicle assembly process, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this 800 volt battery pack was an in-house development with off-the-shelf BMS product, as well as the in-house developed uh, PDU unit. And during the mechanical integration, quite early in the project, we, we had all the work packages involved so that we have the, all the mechanical interfaces to the subframe as well as to the wheels and drive shaft and the electrical connectors we were so that we were on the same page uh, we, we had quite a bit of a weekly and then bi-weekly meeting quite often so that we are we are developing all those interfaces as we go. Uh, similarly, to, uh, in the same uh, electrical integration, we sometimes uh, had, it was not uh, such a regular meeting, but uh, the electrical integration were also an important part because we have to think about the clearances when, when we have mounted all those units and uh, we must have a sufficient clearance for the cables and the connectors. 
and the thermal integration were also conducted with ski ray, AVL, and semi-ground so that we have the connectors and the connectors for the thermal loops. Uh, we agreed on the same standards and and with regard to the software integration, uh, it was basically between, majorly between Downforce and NEPS that we worked uh, in co close collaboration to have a functioning uh, inverter. And uh, with VTT, we were, uh, we were collaborating for the stunt and shuffle control, which is the five oscillation in the system due to some undamped drives soft or something. So it was uh, with VTT and the major part of uh, inverter functionality was, was uh, with collaboration with Townforce. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is the outcome of our uh, effort until now. Uh, here you can see the vehicle uh, with drive mode delivery on it. Uh, next slide, please. And there you can you can view the vehicle in operation. And next slide, please. And uh, uh, now we have everything ready to proceed with our testing. In coming few weeks, we will be. We will be uh, testing this vehicle on on the dynamometer, and as uh, Tommy mentioned in his uh, in his slides, uh, uh, we are going to do similar tests as in as mentioned in D two point one, but at the vehicle level, and also in the dyno test, we are going to do few drive cycles, WLTC and NEDEC drive cycles at different temperatures. Uh, what agreed on was minus seven and plus 23. And uh, even in the test track, uh, we are going to look at the performance of the vehicle. And then once uh, we, are, we are complete with our vehicle testing at NEPS, we will ship the vehicle to VTT and they're, they're going to do the dyno test as well. So these are the testing plan in coming few months. Yeah, that was the end of my presentation, so. Okay, thank you very much, Dupax. Then we can return back to Fernando. Okay, good. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Now we can go to the next project, Refree Drive. Uh, so, Javier, you can take the floor. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if you can uh, hear me and see my screen. We can hear you and we can see your screen. Yep, we are ready. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you very much for, for the introduction, Fernando. Thank you to the, the European Commission, the Project Officer Michael uh, Klima and the European Copper Institute for the organization of, of this um, dissemination event. Uh, well, my name is uh, Javier Romo. I'm a project manager at, uh, at FIDALT, that is a research and development center for energy and transport in, in Spain. Um, FIDALT is the coordinator of the Refree Drive uh, project. Refree Drive uh, stands for uh, Rear Earth Pre E Drives Featuring Low Cost uh, Manufacturing. And I want also to introduce uh, our consortium. Um, we are uh, 13 partners coming from uh, six different countries, with uh, six, uh, six uh, partners coming from Italy, three from the United Kingdom, and one from Belgium, France, Germany, and, and Spain. Okay, um, the main objective of the, of the project is to develop a red earth free traction technologies, mainly, mainly to be, um, to have uh, some freedom uh, and not, not depending on, on raw materials coming from uh, regions uh, not so stable and, and that are out of uh, the 
uh, Europe. Uh, the re Europe is is not uh, um, has not heard uh, the uh, rare earths on on his lands. So, attending to this, also the, the targets of the of the projects are, are to, to reduce the cost of, of the motors, uh, to use technologies that are uh, feasible to be introduced in an industrial scale, and also suitable for uh, mass production solutions, as has been uh, as was the, the aim of the of the call of this of this project. All these uh, targets has been uh, translated into quantitative. Uh, KPIs. Um, for the KPIs, uh, the, the Tesla F60 uh, motor, the, the induction motor of this vehicle has been, has been taken as a baseline. Uh, so, attending to this, uh, we aim to, in, to increase the specific tor torque of the motor by 30%, to reduce the motor energy losses by, by 50%, to reduce the, the cost um, compared to similar solutions by 15% and to increase the power density in, in power electronics by uh, 50%, 50%. In order to make, to make this, we are working with uh, two different technologies, uh, induction machines and uh, synchronous reluctant machines. In both cases, we are um, producing two different solutions. In the, in the case of the induction machines, uh, the, the main difference is in the fabrication of the of the rotor. In, in the first solution, we are working with fabricated solutions, and in the second one, with die cast. And in the case of the of the synchronous uh, reluctant machines, we are also working with two different approaches. The first one is uh, then with permanent magnet assist. It's important to, to notice that these permanent magnets are, are ferrite. Uh, they are not uh, uh, red earth-based uh, permanent magnets. And the other solution is uh, pure synchro synchronous uh, reliance. So if, if you want to, to know further details of, uh, of our motors, please, or of our project, sorry, Please, uh, you can visit our our website or directly, directly or the LinkedIn uh, channel, or also contact one one of, of us. And uh, with this, uh, I want to give the floor to to the um, uh, let's say most uh, more technical uh, partners to to give um, details of on the on the design and, and manufacturing of the. Of the motors, uh, I, I would like to give the floor to uh, Mirza Popescu uh, for um, describing the, the solutions for the induction motor. Please, uh, Mircea, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Javier. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Mircea Popescu. I'm a Chief Technology Officer for uh, Motor Design Limited. Our role in the Refidrive project was uh, coordinating work package three uh, dedicated to the design and analysis of. Uh, the induction machine solution, and as well with inputs in uh, prototyping and testing this solution. Uh, for the induction machine solution, we have investigated the several configurations, uh, inner and outer rotor, and what you see now on the screen is actually the final solution that was uh, uh, obtained uh, as well using uh, specific uh, optimization techniques. Uh, so the final solution, it's an inner rotor, um, induction machine with the, it's a four pole machine with 36 slots and 50 bars and you can see the overall dimensions the OD of the lamination and the stack length uh, values uh, as materials uh, we have as well investigated different uh, electrical steel types to be used in uh, in this uh, type of machines and uh, we have selected uh, the non-oriented uh, silicon uh, iron steel M23535, uh, a 0.35 millimeter thickness. For the rotor, as Javier mentioned, uh, there are uh, two solutions. One uh, is based on, it's a die cast solution uh, with the uh, copper ETP uh, alloy used for uh, to, to generate uh, this uh, squirrel cage. And the other one uh, is making use of the alloy uh, copper silver 0.04% content for fabricated uh, solution. You see that there are some uh, details about the turns per phase uh, and the packing factor for uh, this machine. From the shape of the slots, uh, you notice that uh, it's using a parallel slot configuration 
and uh, this means that we are making use of the uh, so-called hairpin winding technology that ensures a high field factor, um, packing more copper inside the slot. Uh, from the power supply, uh, uh, two solutions, 350 volts for 75 kilowatts and 720 volts for 200 kilo, uh, uh, kilowatts, and the current levels, uh, maximum values, 350 amps RMS and 500 amps RMS. You can see there as well the maps for torque efficiency and power efficiency. Uh, we can achieve uh, with this machine uh, 375 peak newton meter and uh, well above 200 uh, kilowatts required uh, output, maximum output power. Um, next slide, please. From the thermal point of view, uh, because the induction machine uh, will experience uh, losses, uh, as significant losses on the rotor, it's important that the cooling system is capable of extracting heat from both the state or assembly and the rotor. And uh, we selected as a cooling system, uh, one that is connecting in series uh, um, rotor uh, spiral groove uh, together with that uh, from where the fluid goes further into the uh, state or water jacket and then to the inverter. And the flu uh, fluid, uh, cooling fluid, it's uh, selected to be ethylene uh, water glycol mixture, 50-50%, with, flow with flow rates up to 10 liters per minute. And the curves uh, shown here on the screen uh, illustrate what we estimate as a continuous power, meaning that the capability of the machine to deliver torque and power without exceeding 180 degrees uh, Celsius for the stator winding and for the uh, rotor cage. Uh, obviously the bearings as well have to be protected to be below 120 degrees Celsius. And here you realize that we estimate a peak torque of uh, just above 160 Newton meter and uh, uh, peak power uh, at maximum rotational speed uh, uh, close to 120 kilowatt. And uh, those numbers are well above the specifications required for this uh, application. Uh, next slide, please. So we are now at the prototyping stage. Uh, what you see on the screen, these are the first two motors that have been assembled. These are both with the die cast copper uh, rotor solution. Uh, from the rotor assembly, uh, I'm not sure how clear it, it can be observed that the end rings have been actually covered with stainless steel uh, uh, retaining caps, especially because this machine is rotating at 20,000 RPM. The, the end ring uh, made of copper may experience uh, problems due to the centrifugal force. As well, the, the rotor assembly was uh, very in a, built in a very complex way, so that will allow fluid to circulate inside the, the shaft to dissipate the heat from the rotor assembly. Uh, on the stator assembly, you notice the hairpin winding uh, technique uh, and how the stator assembly is fitted in the housing. And here I uh, have to give credit to, uh, from the uh, winding point of view, the hairpin winding was implemented by a Technomatic uh, company from Italy, while the uh, die cast uh, copper uh, was uh, manufactured in, uh, at Broekman. And the, the assembly of the machine and uh, um, the cooling system, uh, it's implemented in, uh, in, in Wales, in uh, UK. Uh, it follows, uh, after this will, will be uh, followed by uh, the testing procedure. But I have to mention that in prototyping stage, we have encountered some uh, um, difficulties, not only because of the uh, virus situation, but due to the complex uh, solution that uh, was selected for this uh, uh, type of machines, meaning the cooling system uh, essentially that uh, has to force liquid go, flowing, uh, flowing uh, through most of the machine. Uh, and uh, that's it on my side. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, good morning. Um, I am uh, Giuseppe Fabri from uh, University of L'Aquila. I am a researcher in the electrical machines, power converter, and the electrical drives research group. Uh, our research group takes care of uh, 
the design of uh, the pure synchronous reluctant uh, motor technology for this uh, for this project. Um, this uh, motor technology was uh, uh, quite interesting because uh, um, it is uh, the, um, the the most promising in terms of cost reduction because because this motor technology doesn't have magnets or copper in the in the rotor core but uh, from uh, uh, the design point of view is uh, really the most uh, the, the the most challenging um, the, the motor was designed to power the uh, uh, premium v vehicles, uh, meaning uh, um, very high rotational speed. And uh, this was uh, one of the main challenge in, in the project. Uh, the the poor synchronous model re reluctance technology has uh, different uh, advantages. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, last slide. Yes, thank you. Um, the, the stator is quite simple. Uh, it is very uh, close to the one of the induction motor. Uh, the, the rotor uh, uh, is uh, very cost effective because it's made uh, essentially by electrical steel. So no, mag no magnets and no copper in the rotor. So it, it is also uh, no source of heat. So uh, the, the cooling issues in the rotor are uh, quite absent and um, potentially is a motor solution exhibiting high efficiency. Uh, the, the drawbacks of this kind of technology is the very challenging design uh, in particular for high speed because uh, all the motor performances are, are dependent of the particular shape uh, of the of the rotor core. Um, also, and the, the, the power factor of this kind of technology is not so high, but uh, by mean of accurate design, uh, this parameter can be taken under control. And the same for TOC ripple. Uh, this technology tends to have a, a higher TOC ripple. Um, to solve uh, these um, challenging uh, requirements and uh, drawbacks of this technology, we developed uh, a new design flow for this uh, motor. In particular, uh, to, to, to make the motor able to fulfill the performances at high speed, and we uh, included in the design flow uh, topology optimization uh, step. Uh, through this topology optimization step, uh, you can see here reported in this slide, uh, we was able to uh, refine the, the, the rotor geometry uh, to uh, make it able to uh, sustain the centrifugal forces at very high speed. Uh, the topology optimization uh, is uh, actually uh, used in mechanical uh, engineering, but uh, in, in this project uh, we um, we realized the very first application of uh, uh, topology optimization integrated with the electromagnetic uh, design. Um, so. Uh, the, the developed motor uh, features six pole uh, architecture with uh, 54 uh, status slot, and uh, uh, it features uh, round wires windings. The, the volume is a bit higher with respect to the induction motor uh, presented before because we have another uh, diameter of 220 millimeters and a length of uh, 200 millimeters for the uh, for the core. Uh, the, the electrical steel adopted is uh, the same for uh, all the um, uh, referee drive motor technology uh, because uh, it has been selected in cooperation with uh, uh, RINA Centro uh, Sviluppo Materiali and uh, uh, the same for the power supplies. So uh, in the bottom of uh, this slide, you can see the, the final geometry of the uh, developed uh, rotor uh, 
core for the pure synchronous reluctance uh, uh, motor. Um, if you are interested in this particular uh, uh, optimization techniques, you can refer to our uh, website. Uh, in the download section, we upload uh, all our uh, uh, publication and presentation. So uh, finally, um, we managed to uh, optimize this uh, model solution to have uh, low torque ripple, uh, an acceptable power factor. Uh, the, the power factor is uh, close to the uh, other model uh, solution presented in this project. And uh, we feature even um, high efficiency and high speed uh, for uh, this model solution. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in this slide, we uh, we resume the, the performances uh, achieved. So uh, the, the rotor is able to uh, provide power up to 18,000 RPM. We, we checked also the mechanics uh, uh, up to 20,000 RPM uh, to, for, uh, as over speed. Uh, the developer torque is about uh, 380 newton meters, uh, and uh, uh, considering the the particular uh, motor technology, we also have a quite uh, wide uh, po 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 power range. Um, to 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 conclude the design part of this. Um, Motor, uh, we 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 uh, learned that this kind of uh, motor technology is quite promising for uh, electric vehicle applications, and um, uh, but uh, in this case uh, the the design for was for uh, very high power performance uh, and premium vehicles. Uh, and, the, the efficiency in particular can be enhanced if we uh, reduce a bit the, uh, the the maximum speed of the machines and and we uh, we apply this machine for uh, less demanding applications uh, starting from the know-how uh, we learned inside this project uh, we also um, verified some uh, new new way to to enhance the performances of this machine. And so uh, actually the, the research continues uh, and these machines uh, can be uh, really uh, promising for the electric vehicle application. In the, in the next slide, we can see some steps of the prototyping of the machines. The lamination was uh, laser cut, but um, we also verified with um, um, with an Italian manufacturer, the possibility to stamp the, the rotor core. So uh, even if the geometry is quite complex, uh, it, it is possible to manufacture it by stamping. And uh, the, the stator was uh, wire rounded. And you can see in the bottom uh, of the slide also the, the developed power electronics uh, for this uh, for this application. Uh, it is based on silicon carbide uh, technology. Uh, finally, the, the, the motor was uh, fully assembled, and uh, in these days, actually, we are uh, performing the, the tests on, on the dynamometer, and this seems to um, confirm the, the, the simulation results we obtained for this machine. And that's it for uh, my side. The, Thank you, Giuseppe. And um, then we can go on with the with the permanent uh, magnet assist uh, synchronous uh, reluctant motors uh, that is going to be presented by by Adrian Nilsson from uh, IFP uh, Energy Energy Novels. Please, Adrian, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Adrian Nilsson, and I'm a research engineer at IFPN. Um, I'm going to say um, now a few words about the, the permanent magnet machines, about the design and the testing. Um, so the machine is, uh, so you can see here the, the machine topology. 
um, the machine is using a Macon rotor design, uh, meaning the, the rotor poles are not uh, symmetric. This is to uh, reduce the, the torque, torque ripple on the machine. Um, the machine is five pole pairs, and the uh, number of slots uh, pole per phase is equal to two. Um, and for each pole, uh, the machine is using seven ferrite magnets, and uh, the air gap here is uh, 0 0.6 millimeter. Um, um, we so we design uh, we design two machines, um, high power and low power machine. Um, Ah, yeah, and uh, thank you. And we are using uh, the lamination is made of a 0 0.35 millimeter um, uh, iron steel. Um, next slide, please. We designed um, two uh, different machines, so a uh, high power one and a low power one. So about the 75 kilowatt machine, the simulated torque is about uh, 148 Newton meter with a maximum power of 88 kilowatts, uh, with a DC build voltage of 350 volts. Um, the expected efficiency is 95%, and the weight of the active part is 19 kilograms. About the 200 kilowatt machine, uh, we are aiming for a 400 Newton meter and a peak power of 206 kilowatts. Um, the maximum efficiency is 96% while the weight is 46 kilograms. So um, at IFPN, we, uh, we can test um, uh, we can test a wide range of electric machines. So here you can see the um, one of our test bench. So this one was used to test the 75 kilowatt uh, machine. So the capability of the test bench is uh, a maximum power of 126 kilowatts and a maximum torque of 390 Newton meter with a maximum speed of 19,000 RPM. So you can see on the, um, on the slide, um, the machine and also the silicon carbide inverter we used, as well as the two uh, Next slide, please. So now a uh, quick overview of the testing. So um, most of the target performances were achieved, uh, as you can see on the bottom table, in terms of uh, specific peak power, specific peak torque and weight, and also the, the peak efficiency uh, is quite good with 96.3%. So this is for the mo motor only. Um, you can see on the graph uh, on the right side, this is the efficiency map for uh, the system, the complete system, meaning the, the inverter plus the electric machine. Um, we also uh, evaluated the, the efficiency of the system on uh, the driving cycle, and it's around 90%. Um, however, mainly due to a uh, weaker magnet than anticipated, the peak torque and peak power of the machine is uh, a little lower. Next slide, please. So um, finally, uh, this is our uh, test bench. So this is a different test bench. This is for the 200 kilowatt machine. And um, this test bench is um, able to provide 250 kilowatt and a maximum torque of uh, 500 Newton meter maximum speed of 20,000 RPM. So here uh, you can see on the test bench the 200 kilowatt uh, machine. Uh, the tests are uh, close to completion at IFPEN. Um, like the first, uh, the 75 kilowatt machine, we expect a little lower performances due to the magnets. And um, but I can already say that uh, the peak efficiency for this machine is also quite good with 96.3%. Uh, 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 thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, thank you very much, uh, all of you, for the for the nice uh, present technical presentation. Just the, the last slide of, of uh, Refri Drive's uh, presentation to summarize the, the actual status of the project. 
the, the prototyping of the, the eight motors that are going to be built in this project are very close to the, to the end. And we are uh, just, um, just some issues with uh, some of the induction machines to, to be totally finished. As uh, Adrian has explained, the, the testing on the test bench are, are running um, according to the new uh, time schedule. Uh, the, the integrated power to test, uh, power train testing that, that will be done in Fidout is uh, close to, to, to a start because uh, the, the, the first um, induction, uh, sorry, the French uh, synchronous machine has, uh, has been shipped uh, to, to Fidout uh, last week. And uh, this, uh, this um, testing on, on bench testing will be our plan to, to be end by the end of the year. And then we will go with the vehicle integration to be, uh, to be coordinated by, by Prebe and, and to, to have everything ready by the end of the project that is planned by, by March uh, 221. So this is, uh, this is all from, from our side. Thank you very much for, for your attention. And I want to, to give the floor back to, to Fernando. Thank you. OK, thank you. Thank you, Javier. Um, that's an uh, interesting project as well. So now let's go for modulet project. So Charlie, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yes, so I'm going to, to share my screen. Okay, can you see it? Yes, it works well. Thank you. Okay. Welcome everybody to this webinar. I am Charlie Lanolik. I am Power Electronics Engineer at CA in Grenoble and also coordinator of the Modulity project. So Modulity means modular electric drive trains. And um, I'm going to present uh, the main achievements of the project. Uh, so concerning the agenda, I will make uh, a short introduction to the Modulity project and the main achievements uh, concerning so the, po the powertrain layout, the GAN-based inverter, and the electric motor, and so I will uh, be able to draw some conclusions. So introduction to the Modulity project. So we are consor well, we, the consortium is uh, composed of nine partners, so uh, in uh, Belgium, uh, Sweden, etc. And uh, as for me, I am in CEA in Grenoble uh, in the Power Electronics Lab, and we are in charge of the Power Electronics. Uh, Punch Power Train um, has designed the Power Train itself and the housing and the cooling system uh, in, um, in collaboration with IKA for, for thermal studies and also uh, ZG uh, for mechanical bearings. Um, after there is Siemens um, uh, for simulations, uh, T.Y. Eindhoven for, for the motor control, Chalmers for the regenerative braking, and uh, in, in extension innovation for, for supporting CL for the coordination. And also we have a, and also we have a website uh, that you can see here. It's modulityproject.eu. So. In fact, the, the, the main advantage of full electric or hybrid vehicle is that they do not reject carbon dioxide during operation compared to an internal combustion engine. But to completely fill the targets, uh, electric vehicles must be manufactured with a low carbon footprint. And in fact, this is possible by re reducing the amount of materials used and the, or the manufacturing process, the recyclability, and the design optimization of the system. Um, in fact, there are critical issues, for example, concerning some materials such as copper and rare earth magnet, especially in Europe, because we do not hold raw material or semiconductor. Their production can be very energy intensive. So this is why we, we must adapt the electric system nowadays with new, more efficient technologies. So this is why uh, you can see state of the art on the left hand side of the slide and our ambition for the modulity project. So concerning the power train, we would like to reduce the cost of 15% and we can do that by reducing the amount of rarus inside the rotor of the, of the electric motor, uh, using an inverter with, um, with lower cost semiconductor. So we are trying in this point, in the framework of the project gallium natural semiconductor, uh, they are uh, still very expensive because it's not mass production for the ones that we use, but it's going to 
the prices go, are going to be lower uh, in the future. So we would like to increase the efficiency also of the, of the overall system, uh, add a regenerative, regenerative braking uh, system, also increase the reliability, so 33% 30, increase of e-motor fault tolerance, and also make a, a, f a, fully, uh, a fully integrated system, uh, so a vehicle, a vehicle integration, high speed losses reduction and signal cooling motor transmission and, uh, and electronics, uh, around about 15% size reduction and a modular design. So the, the total cost of the project uh, represents uh, 7 billion and uh, this project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme. So in fact, Modulity aims at developing a new generation of modular electric powertrain for battery electric vehicle and hybrid electric vehicle up to full-scale demonstration integrated in a battery electric vehicle platform. So during the project, uh, we have de developed an innovative and modular powertrain uh, using new technologies, including a six-phase electric motor using less virus magnets, inverter using latest generation of GAN semiconductors, optimized transmission and, and advanced cooling features, uh, also an integrated regenerative braking with extended range of energy recuperation, reduced sizing, advanced control with higher fault tolerance, Sorry. with higher fault tolerance. And in fact, uh, the, the final system that you will be able to see at the end of the presentation is a global optimization of all parts put together. That is to say, inverter, uh, GAN inverter, uh, electric motor, elect, uh, co cooling system, uh, and the mechanical arrangements. So concerning the powertrain layout, so Punch Powertrain has designed the powertrain housing along with the cooling of the power electronics and the electric motor. So there were several objectives. Uh, so the, the scope of Punch Powertrain, it's an innovative and compact two-speed reducer, compact full in-system integration, system level validation and, in, and integration in demonstrator. The main objectives it was to evaluate two-speed concept regarding shift quality, noise, and lubrification challenge. Also, evaluate highest risks of compact integration, uh, and also gain knowledge by cross-country expert collaboration. So you can see on the picture in the middle the powertrain design on the top, and uh, the powertrain, uh, the 3D model of the of the of the housing. Uh, connected to the wheels. The most important things to retain here it's the it's the power density of the powertrain design, and it's around 2.3 kilowatt per liter. So it's quite uh, it's quite compact, and it includes all the things necessary to uh, to to run your car. That is to say, the inverter, the motor, the cooling system, uh, and the battery is on the is on the floor of the, of the car, and uh, on the right hand side of the picture, you can see the motor. So it's the side cut of the housing, the inverter, the high speed stage, and the low speed stage. Concerning the cooling concepts, so the cooling is divided in two subsystems because in such a system, you have two things uh, which dissipates a lot of energy, a lot of losses. It's the inverter and the, mot and the motor. Uh, you also have the me mechanical losses, but they are much less than the inverter and motor losses. So cooling system div dividing in two subsystems, they, they can be connected in series or in parallel, but for our configuration, we, we chose series connection and the inverter is cooled first. So concerning the cooling specifications, so the flow the flows expected is up to 15 liters per minute. Uh, they performed uh, simulation for flows up, up to 20 liters per minute, and they optimized the pressure drop of the powertrain cooling versus the flow rate, and they limit the, the power of the pump. Because when you have lower losses, uh, your cooling capability is reduced, so you can put, uh, you can put a, um, a, low, a lower power pump. And so the pump will be able to operate a lower power because we have lower losses thanks to an efficient inverter and an efficient motor. So for example, here you have a board 
uh, of the of the inverter and you can see the semiconductors so noted by one two and three which are put thanks to a thermal interface material on the pockets uh, on the water plate on the left hand side and here is the floor it's it's a, it's a circuit cooling of the of the whole power train so concerning the inverter cooling uh, we want to achieve mass flow unity uh, mass flow uniformity between cooling pockets, uh, release good heat transfer from gain transistor to coolant, and low pressure drop. So this is why a lot of iterations uh, have been done by simulations uh, up to find the best uh, configurations. As you can see on the top side, you, it's, uh, you can see uh, coolant fins, uh, which can spread the heat dissipated by the gain on the top, uh, to the water and the mass flow and on the left on the right hand side of the picture you can see the mass flow rate in, gr in gram per second in function of the channel number and you can see that the base design uh, the repartition of the of the water was not very good and uh, with a lot of iterations and uh, optimizations of the cooling system um, punch power train and IKF found a solution to have um, to have an, to have uh, a good a good repartition of the water uh, through the through the pockets. Concerning the motor cooling, so this is a stator cooling with seven parallel circular channels. Still, uh, simulations for cooling performance, flow uniformity, and pressure and pressure drop have been done uh, to to have a good repartition of the water. Uh, inside the cooling channels, and so parameter sweep for flow for for flow fit channels, flow uniformity in seven parallel channels also, and pressure drop is optimized. So you have the same chart on the right hand side of the slide. So the mass flow rate in gram per second in function of the channel number, and you can see that the the, the flow in the one and the seven is almost the same uh, compared to the base design. Uh, the, the flow of the first channel was much higher, almost 50 gram per second, uh, whereas the seventh, the, the seventh channel was just a little bit higher than 10 gram per second. So you, you, you could have um, hot points uh, with the base design, uh, whereas in the improved design, the temperature will be much more homogeneous in the, in, in the room where is the motor. Concerning the GAN inverter, uh, concerning, concerning the, the power results, uh, we, have used, we have decided to, uh, to design a GAN inverter using gallium nitride technology and not silicon carbide technology uh, with a new technology, uh, with a new topology, sorry. Uh, it's a topology uh, which we will see in the slide after, uh, allowing to put motor phases in series or in parallel. It's also a reconfigurable machine increasing fault, tol fault tolerance management. We are using latest gain semiconductor generating lower losses, lower losses, and so it's more efficient inverter. And so when you, are, you have a more efficient inverter, you can decrease uh, the, co the cooling capability. Uh, the coolant circuit pump power pump is decreased and, the, and it is a compact and modular design. Uh, so we are still under test because we have taken some delay, some delay with uh, with Corona crisis, but uh, it's uh, it's ongoing. Uh, the inverter efficiency is around 98% at 62 kilowatts, and so it's a very efficient. It's a very efficient inverter. Uh, it's, it's very efficient inverter, even even with the topology uh, used that uh, I will uh, show you after. So the design of the inverter is not only composed by the power boards that you can see on the right hand side of the of the slide, uh, but also by control and communication board, which uh, allow to control GAN transistors and also communicate with the CAN bus of the vehicle. And you also have uh, some uh, intermediate interface boards to to transfer signals and current sensor boards to recuperate to recuperate uh, the current through each phase of the motor. So the topology is uh, shown uh, on the right hand side on the top 
of the slide. And in fact, we are instead of using half bridges to power um, to power conventional uh, uh, electric motor, we are using full bridges, and those full bridges are connected together uh, to allow us to put uh, motor in series or, or in parallel. And in fact, when you have a failure concerning a phase, you can isolate uh, the failure by opening the full bridge and keep running the motor by uh, changing the modulation, uh, by changing the modulation. So here I will show you the system integration of the system. So here, it's uh, where the, the, the flow, the, the, the water is, uh, is going. So you sorry, we, uh, sorry, Charlie, we can only see the PowerPoint. Um, I don't know whether you're sharing a different um, software. Ah. You can stop sharing and share the, your, your screen to make sure we can see your, yes. see this. your player. OK, yeah, it works now. Yeah. OK. Very good. So, so you can see here, it's, uh, it's uh, the, the main housing of the power train. So here you have pockets in pink and blue. Uh, in fact, the water is going up and down of this pocket. After you have the water plate, you have support for the DC link. You have the GAN power boards, uh, which are part of the, of the inverter, the power parts. After you have the same things on the, on the bottom side, and after the connection from the power boards to the DC link. To the DC link. Here you have phase connection. As we have a six-phase machine with full bridges, we with full bridges we have uh, also twelve connections, current sensor boards, DC link, control interface board, and control and communication board to send signals and battery connector. Okay, I get back to my presentation. Concerning the multi-phase motor design with optimized magnetic materials. So we optimize, it's an, it's an optimized uh, multi-phase motor with a high RPM, so more than 22 RPM. So higher efficiency than state-of-the-art buried permanent magnet motors, 96, and Brusa reached 97. More sustainable design with reduced amount of wireless magnets, target 45%, and they decrease the amount of wireless by, by uh, 52. So we so solution with mold injection of magnet material for improved water manufacturing. Uh, stator with four minutes wire for lower copper losses. And investigation of using a rare free ferrite magnet for total motor cost reduction. So here you can see a comparison between the BMW, BMW E3 specifications and the Moduli D-Motor specifications. So you have uh, the peak current for a six-phase electric machine, it's 225 for the Moduli D-Motor. BMW E3, it's a three-phases machine, and so the amount of current is higher per phase. It's, four, it's 410. The, we are using for Moduli D motor form lit wire to reduce copper losses. So the number of phase is six instead of three for the BMW E3. And the, the max motor speed is 22,000 RPM. Uh, and the BMW E3 is only 11,000. The peak power is higher for the, for the BMW E3 and is lower for Moduli D. So this is uh, that it is. Uh, we will not reach uh, 100 kilom kilometer uh, in the same time, uh, but the peak power is higher for, for Moduli D. And the only the, the main thing to retain uh, of Moduli D motor is that the stator outer and the stator inner diameter are less than the BMW E3. Uh, only the active length is a little bit increased, but the magnet weight is lower as well. 1.32 instead of 2, two kilograms. 
and the, the magnetic mount reduction to reference motor has been reduced by 52 for, for the module D rotor and DFEB, and for the injected motor, and for the mold injected motor uh, magnet, it's 40%. So on the right side of the slide, you can see the, the motor curve. Uh, and you can see that the, the peak torque is 160 and the peak power is around 170 kilowatts. A little picture of the form is higher in, inside the slot. Concerning the direct injection of bonded magnets into the rotor. So as CEA, we have a magnetic lab laboratory uh, and the magnetic design of the mool includes magnetic shunts allowing homogeneous field repartitions. So you can see on the right hand side of the, of the slide an actual rotor with um, FESI lamination and the rotor for tests. So the actual rotor is the test that we will, will be uh, included uh, inside, inside the, ro the, the rotor of the real motor. But for, to, to make a first injection, we plan to, we, we, we did it with a rotor for test, so plain steel, and just to, uh, to spare parts. So the 3D design of the mold is completed, taking into account all specification, all specific requirements of the modulity of rotor injection. Uh, the manufacturing of the equipment and test rotor is in progress, and impact of injection pressures is, has been studied and uh, a lot of simulation corresponding to the magnetizing uh, has been done. So concerning the system demonstration and validation, uh, the integration of the power train and the regenerative braking system will be done in the vehicle. So it is a process ongoing and the test will be done on the chassis dyno and the pulling ground. And so we will uh, finish uh, the, the project by a final event. Uh, with a vehicle demonstration, if it's possible. So, conclusions. Thanks to the adoption of efficient semiconductors, so in our case, it's a uh, gallium nitride semiconductors and innovative motor, so more efficient and greener. Hybrid powertrain and hybrid cooling building blocks will develop during the project, enabling a new concept for the battery electric vehicle and hybrid electric vehicle market, and it is the modularity. And by providing low cost, efficient and versatile powertrains, the mobility is addressing the needs of the cars manufacturers to be able to respect the carbon dioxide emission regulations worldwide. And in addition, reducing the amount of ferrous elements needed per kilowatt, minus 50%, we will have also a positive impact on the, on the environment. And we also do not, uh, do not have the leadership of the market. The combination of all the research and development during the modulity project will enable the consortium to reach the following impact. So the cost reduction, so 15% reduction thanks to motor, 20% uh, rarest, magnet, rarest magnet and other components minus 5%. I do not include the GAN inverter because GAN semiconductors are still very expensive. At motor level, increase of the power density of 100%, and increase in, mat in maximum operating speed as well, so twice compared to BMW S3, so passing from 11 to 22,000 RPM. And compatibility engine, compatibility with engine coolant temperature, allowing hybrid applications with a single powertrain cooling system and ability to operate at 90 degrees Celsius. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you.